Hello and welcome. Today we'll be getting into a quick match really quick. That is why I guess they call it quick match. And I am playing my Zana deck. Let's see who we're going to be matched up against. Hopefully it's an interesting match. I am excited. And a real quick yawn there. Don't know why. I'm not tired per se. Or bored. We are playing Boris. Um, and I'm drawing my cards right now. And now it's his turn to sacrifice a card. We'll see what he sacrifices. Well, I guess we don't get to know what he sacrifices. And I'm assuming he is going to sacrifice a card first turn. Uh, his name is Grimgor. Grimgor? Yeah. Um... So let's, let's see what kind of Boris he's playing. Even though I think actually with Dark Prophecies, Boris actually got more one dimensional. Uh, we are gonna sacrifice one Elizabeth Winterborn. Not two, not two, just one. And uh, but Boris, they, I they feel like before Dark Prophecies, there were a lot of different Boris decks. There was ones that focused maybe on some weapons. There was ones that had no weapons and just focused on allies and uh, some of the abilities that they have, which is the Boris deck I ran. I didn't have any weapons or armor in my Boris deck. Actually, I might have had two King's Pride. That was, sometimes I'd have King's Pride, sometimes I wouldn't. Um, I'm not going to be too concerned about item destruction in a uh, against the Boris. They use more of attachments than items. So I've sacrificed the, uh, whatever it's called, Focused Prayer. And I'm going to play my Champion of Irum. And there we go. Uh, but with Dark Prophecies, now that uh, Boris has the uh, dragon's tooth weapon i feel like that's almost a must have for boris i haven't played around with boris to confirm that oh my gosh that is a card that you must put in your deck but it feels like that's what it's like it's a very um needed card in a boris deck uh we're gonna get rid of this tainted oracle and we are going to play Sacred Firewalker and kill as Alden. And what I like uh, um, to do is, so I've boosted up my champion of Irum, which he has, his ability is going to be able to kill it next turn. And I'm probably going to play the Elizabeth Wonderborn next turn, but I'm assuming he's going to kill the champion of Irum, especially with the Sacred Firewalker attached to it. So I'm hoping that... He might throw out an ally this turn with only four health. He knows it's going to die, but it's taking away the damage from him. And he's going to play Stalwart Battle, Battle Guard, which does have four health, but isn't very helpful. Or, I mean, I can't kill it because it's of its ability. Uh, it was a very useful card there, but we'll see. Sorry, I'm thinking. I'll say something after I decide what I want to do. I want to play Elizabeth Winterborn. So I'm debating getting rid of the Sacred Firewalker or Fleet-Footed Messenger. We only have 30 more seconds. Hmm, Boris. We're going to get rid of the Sacred Firewalker. And I'll explain why in three seconds. The reason I wanted to get rid of the Sacred Firewalker is because Boris can kill allies. So that means I don't want to put allies that are good on the board. I'd rather put allies, more allies on the board. And the reason I played Elizabeth Winterborn is now he has a choice. Now the right the correct decision in my mind would be to kill the champion of Irum. But of course, and you know, he can actually kill the Elizabeth Winterborn with his stalwart battle guard. But he might make an incorrect decision. He might make a bad decision. I think that's a big aspect of this game is 
making your opponent make decisions. Make him think. Make him make a decision because sometimes he'll make a bad one. Uh, sometimes he won't make the correct one. And if you don't give him an option to make, well then, you know, he's guaranteed to make the correct one. Uh, it's a poker concept that I've kind of applied to Shadow Era. We're going to get, well, I don't know, Focus Prayer or a Tidal Wave. I think we're going to get rid of Focus Prayer just because I can usually handle most items that a warrior deck's going to have. And we have a couple options here. I don't want to play Tidal Wave, but I don't like, you know what, well, you know what we're going to do? We're going to play Fleet Footed Messenger. And we're going to shuffle one of the tidal waves back in the deck. And I get a champion of Erum. And let me let me talk about Fleet Footed Messenger's ability for a second. I think it's interesting. I kind of like it. Um, it's a fun ability. I've been like debating whether to take that out and maybe put Jasmine in this deck. Or probably not Larian Seductress, but probably Jasmine instead of the Fleet Footed Messenger. Or just playing around with the Fleet Footed Messenger. And it does go better with King's Pride, in my opinion. But we're going to sacrifice the Champion of Irum. He didn't actually play a card that turn, he just killed my Fleet Footed Messenger and did whatever. I uh, might be expecting a tidal wave but we aren't gonna play it i don't see the point in that um ooh, and we got a retreat we are gonna make him retreat and we're gonna attack boris with our wizard staff and as you can see um wow he's down seven health so that's that's a lot um he hasn't hurt us at all i'm saving that tidal wave what I want to do is I want to try to edge him on to draw, putting out as many allies as I can get him to put out. I think most people, especially good players now, you know, when they're playing priests, they have a, like, tidal wave in the back of their mind, always thinking, well, I can't play a lot of allies, I can't play a lot of allies, I don't know if they have a tidal wave or not. And I agree to that strategy. Um, so, especially him, he's a good card to play on, on its own. Uh, it pretty much prevents me from playing Tidal Wave. I don't see the point, even though I may have to at some point. I don't know. Oh, and I got another retreat. Really lucky for me. Well, we're just going to retreat him again. Still trying to edge him on to play. And we're not going to attack his Boris this turn with the Wizard Staff. We want to save some of that durability. Uh, I like to use it the first turn just in case they destroy it the next turn immediately. But after that, we're going to be keeping it as long as possible and the other thing is someone pointed out and I can't remember who a long time ago on the forums that when you play a weapon you should be planning to attack the first turn simply because uh, you get to weapons don't have a cooldown turn like allies do so uh, I would assume some people would argue that the only exception to that would be Wiz and Staff, but I'll argue that it's okay to attack the first turn and then you want to keep the three durability as long as possible. Uh, we're going to skip. I don't really see any point in sacrificing anything at this point. We're going to use my Wiz and Staff and draw a card and we're going to get a Sacred Firewalker. Now, I'm trying to think of what I want to do. I'm probably just going to play Gunther. I don't see the point in playing a Tidal Wave. He did decide to switch up allies after his stalwart battle guard was retreated twice. Um, the only thing that's going to be an issue is a crippling blow, which I'm assuming he, he probably has it, uh, one in his hand. He's played one. He probably hasn't sacrificed any. Oh, and he's got a Dragon's Tooth to kill my Gunther. And that is why I was debating on keeping those focused prayers. But I decided to go with getting rid of them. That Dragon's Tooth, that's a hard card to 
deal with. I never really know how to deal with it. Especially in a Boros deck. It's a really good uh, card to have in a Boros deck, even though I, I will say again that I feel that it's almost like Boris didn't really have cards that he had to have in his deck, and now all of a sudden, he does. Uh, we're going to use Tidal Wave, just because I have two. I want to play a card. My champion of Irum is already dead. There's no really bringing him back. I don't have any cards to remove those attachments on him. Or the one, just the Crippling Blow. And I have two. Uh, so I'll have a second in my hand. I don't plan on sacrificing that. Ooh, we might actually... Well... I'm hesitant playing this champion of Irum because then he's just going to kill it. But... No... We might use that as sacrificing material. And... We'll see. Boris... Usually when I get into this point in the game... Unless I can play a lot of low level allies in a turn... Okay, so he's playing the Stalwart and Enrage, which gives him 10 more health, which puts him at uh, 20. I can't really read the number. Ooh, and we got a Armored Sandworm, which doesn't help at all. Oh, he's at 29. Yeah, I couldn't tell if it was a 20 or a 29. Yeah, we're just going to sacrifice that card. We're going to draw one, the Champion of Irum. Oh, and I got a Tainted Oracle. Which is kind of cool, and I'll tell you why. Because he can't kill... Well, yeah, he can. He can kill with his ability. But it'll give me cards. So we're going to do that. And we're going to attack his Dragon's Tooth and try to get rid of that card. Um, I don't know how many you'd put in a Boris stack. Um, he probably doesn't have four of those cards in his deck. I would assume you would put in like three dragons too. I mean, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I don't know what do, what do you guys do with your high cost cards? Usually, I don't have a deck that has a cost six card with um, however many of those in the deck. A four. I usually don't put a cost four or cost seven. And that is why I was keeping Tidal Wave. I don't put a cost or a cost six or a cost seven card in my deck for copies of it. I do not usually do that. So what do you guys do? Leave a comment. Do you put four? I'm not saying one's right or one's wrong, but you know, you've got options here. We're gonna get rid of this sacred firewalker. And we're gonna play. Tidal Wave. We're going to play my Wizard Staff. Uh, we are not going to use... We are going to use its ability. And I get another Tidal Wave. And we are going to attack Boris here. Yeah, I'm going to save my Shadow Energy. We're going to attack Boris and... Mainly, we're getting rid of this Dragon's Tooth is the whole point of that. Uh, we do have a retreat, which is gonna come in hand, which is gonna come in hand, in my opinion. We'll see how many allies he plays this turn. I've got two armored sandworms and a Gunther, and I'm gonna try to get those out. I don't think I've ran across the King's Pride yet. Uh, we'll see what he does though. He plays a Puin and ends his turn. He played a Puin and ended his turn. That's all he did. Was that a mistake? Or... I don't know. He played... What does that mean? He just played a... Did he not have another card? Does he have just like crippling blows in his deck? Okay, I want to try to sacrifice a card so I can throw out two sandworms. Um, but I don't know which card I want to sacrifice. I might just get rid of that retreat even though I don't want to. I don't really know what else we'd do. I'm um, thinking, thinking, 20 seconds. Tidal Wave or Retreat? I think Tidal Wave's too important. But of course I'm putting out multiple allies. Yeah, we're gonna get rid of Tidal Wave. We're gonna play two Armored Sandworms. 
we're gonna draw a card even though at this point in the game I'm a little hesitant in drawing cards for the simple reason that he has 17 and I have 12 of course he is drawing to each turn which means he's got eight and a half cards right now um, and I have 12 but, you know maybe okay never mind I was thinking maybe he only played the pew in so that he could just build up on cards and maybe and he's got two crippling bows for each sandworm and a wild berserker and a champion of Urim. I shouldn't have gotten rid of that tidal wave. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I shouldn't have gotten rid of it. I just did not think that was what he was going to do. What did you think he was going to do? I thought he had another dragon's tooth is what I thought honestly. He was going to play that and kill one of them. I mean, I knew that was always an option, but... Oh my gosh. Should have kept it. I want to get a King's Pride. I'm going to sacrifice a King's Pride. It's probably the bad move, but I'm kind of a little angry right now. Ooh, cool. I got a Focus Prayer. That's helpful. Not. Let's just kill this thing. Oh, did you hear the sound effect? Boom. Oh, and it does five damage. That's kind of helpful. We're going to make this... Champion of Irum Retreat, because he has the most attack. We're going to use my ability. Oh my gosh, I should not have sacrificed the Tidal Wave. Why didn't you scream at your, t at your computer screen and or mobile devices screen? Don't sacrifice the Tidal Wave! You don't have to play both Armored Sandworms this turn. You can play whatever. You should have screamed it louder. Man. That was a mistake. I will tell you here and now. Sacrificing that tidal wave, mistake. A mistake. It might cost me the game. I don't know if I was going to win this game anyway, but sacrificing the tidal wave was a mistake. It was a mi I can't stress it enough. If you have a tidal wave and he's got 11 resources, don't sacrifice it. And I got one. I am not worthy of that time <laughs> that is, so this is my fourth tidal wave and oh my gosh this is gonna be like my saving grace here ready 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 boris Woo! tidal wave my last one sucks huh we're gonna play gunther ah then we're gonna i don't know what do you want to do heal or draw a card we're gonna heal we're not gonna draw a card and the Reasoning behind that is um, Unless he's got a dragon's tooth, which he might not have he can't kill my Gunther. I've got a King's pride I need to heal. I need to make sure he can't just kill me soon uh, Plus I only have nine cards. He has six and a half now, and he's got a dragon's tooth Man, it's like I don't know what to do against this type of Boris deck. This is a good Boris deck. Uh, we are going to draw a card this turn. Obviously. Ooh, and do we... Okay, we're just going to play King's Pride right now. And the only thing we can play is a Fleet Footed Messenger. Great. Uh, we'll keep the Armored Sandworm. We won't put it back in our deck. Uh, and then we are going to attack the hero simply because I don't see what we profit out of attacking the stalwart battle guard that's a hard work hard to say and I don't really know how to abbreviate it SB I don't know that sounds kind of confusing because there is the sun blighted one which is kind of like SBO and like stalwart I mean, that's just not an easy word to say battle guard Battle Guard's not bad. We'll call it Battle Guard. Battle Guard. That kind of sounds like a. Uh... Well, I don't know. Okay, <laughs> can't believe I'm making this kind of a reference. But did you ever play with Beyblades? I had a Beyblade when I was a kid. I don't know why I thought of it. It just sounded like it for some reason. Beyblades. It was like battling tops. And if you're from another country and you're like, what are Beyblades? It was these like metal tops that you would spin in this like plastic arena. And then the first top 
to like topple over or lost. And you know, so they'd run into each other and you could like build them certain ways to have like more weight or more like spikes on the end and stuff. Yeah, it was weird. And um, we'll see what he does. He's gonna kill my fleet footed messenger. Obviously. Oh, is he gonna kill it with the dragon's tooth? I don't know if I believe that. What are you gonna do now? Well, we can just use his ability. What was the point in that? I don't know what that was. Oh, is he like edging him on? Like, oh, you can attack it with your wizard staff. I don't know, that was weird. Why didn't he just attack my hero? I don't know. It's a mystery to me. Oh, well, we're not going to draw a card. We are going to attack. Wait. He has Dragon's Tooth only has one more durability, so we're going to get rid of that. Hopefully that's his last one. Maybe he had three in his deck and then he sacrificed one. I don't know. Uh, the reason I didn't draw a card is because I played Elizabeth Winterborn. Uh, I'm really getting low on cards. This is a long game. Oh, and I got a King's Pride. Great. Uh, I've played long games, and I usually don't keep them just because they're so long, and I don't end up talking about a lot. But let's see. What else can we talk about besides Beyblades? I try to talk about Shadow Era most of the time, but my brain goes off topic very, very often. So I sometimes have to refocus, and he just has every card. Man, this is Boris defeating Zana. And I, I made mistakes, though. I will say, I made. Why has he got treasure? To, the his deck, though. I don't know. It's like it feels like he always has the right card that he really needs. I don't know if that's just a good deck or what. Um, if you're new to Zana, I wouldn't suggest playing this deck that I have here. It's not great. It's just okay. I've been frustrated with it. Of course, and I lost. I don't think I can win. Maybe make a like Mills on a deck. Is that possible? Can you make? Can you even make a good Mill deck since Dark Prophecies? I don't even know. It doesn't look like. Okay, now I've never played Magic: The Gathering, uh, which is, you know, the other pop. You know, the main popular trading collectible guard game. You know. But uh, mill decks, you know, in that game, that's where it originated. That's, you know, it's, I know it's a viable option. Uh, I have played the game. I don't own any cards and I don't, you know, I don't remember all the rules and stuff, but I have played it before. Uh, I said I didn't, I have played the game. But, uh, you know, Shadow Era, It'd be kind of cool if there was like an elementalist mill option, but I just don't think that there is. Uh, we'll skip. We'll play Gunther. We'll play my wizard staff. We'll heal up. And we are going to kill that uh, battle guard. Battle guard! Die! And he gets two cards from that. This is a really, I gotta end my turn. This is a really, uh, it's a close game though, you know? He's still got a bunch of cards. I was drawing cards, and I'm trying to sacrifice them and stuff, but I guess that's the problem with this deck, is you want to sacrifice a lot of cards to get King's Prayer, but all of the cards are very helpful. Like, there's no situational card um, if you're playing with a deck with allies. Uh, so I think that's one of the main issues in this deck is you know, it's not like, oh, I'm going, like, you know, I sacrifice focused prayer this game because I'm going up against a warrior and they're not always relying on items, especially Boris. Amber, I'm keeping those, but against a Boris? But I should have kept them. But then it's like, what else do you sacrifice? I don't know. Do you sacrifice the retreats? No, you want to keep those. Well, do I want to sacrifice the tidal waves? No. I mean, I want to keep... I mean, I kept three of them. I only sacrificed one. 
Thanks for watching. Comment, rate, subscribe. Bye.